There are a lot of variables in, in rigging, as all arborists know, and we really want to try and control those and at least measure them so that we can use this in explaining what happens in our experiments. We've made, weighed this piece of wood. This one happens to be exactly 150 pounds. We know its diameter, its length. We do know the placement of the knots on this and the amount of rope that's in the system. When I define the distance a piece of wood falls, I'm concerned with where the center of this piece of wood is before it starts and where the center of that piece is after it comes to rest on the end of the line. So Peter, would you summarize the results for us? Yeah, we've identified several variables that we've been trying to test. The type of rope that we're using, the distance the piece of wood falls, the weight of the piece of wood. The amount of rope in the system is one of the key variables. Um, the other thing that we've looked at is the angles that the ropes make when they come into the arborist block at the top of the tree. What we found is that if we are rigging a piece of wood with our anchor point, our friction device at the base of, of a straight vertical tree, that the reaction force we measure at the top will be a little bit more than double the force in the rigging line. And that comes from the friction in the block. We can then take our anchor point off the base of one tree and move it to a separate tree. And we find that when we change that angle, we put more rope in the system. And our force in the rigging line will go down. And the anchor force at the arborist block will now be less than double the force in the rigging line. The other variable is the amount of rope in the system. We found that if we start to chunk a tree down, when we get lower to the ground, there's less rope out, and that the rigging forces will go up, both the force in the rope and the force at the block. And last, there's the type of rope. When we use a three-strand rope, for example, that has more stretch and lower strength than perhaps a double braid line, we find that the forces are lower. It's all very, very interesting information and valuable information for a working arborist that works with loads, with ropes, in many different scenarios in order to be able to make good decisions on safe, productive applications. Absolutely. Even if you're not out trying to calculate the forces in your rigging system, you always have options and different ways to rig. And knowing some of these results allows you to choose your rigging appropriately for the situation at hand.